So today I'm going to show you how to do a real common task in uh, phylogenetics, uh, and that's to compare two phylogenetic trees visually uh, using what's called a tanglegram. And a tanglegram is essentially uh, two trees uh, posing each other, facing different directions, uh, with association lines between their terminal uh, leaves, their terminal taxa, uh, showing where the, uh, the same taxa occur on two different trees. So uh, you can use this to compare different methods of uh, phylogenetic reconstruction. Uh, you can use it to compare uh, like a little species tree, uh, comparing uh, what you would get if you used two different genes. Uh, there are just numerous ways that uh, a tanglegram can be beneficial in, in uh, looking at phylogenetic questions. So uh, this is a tanglegram that I, I created that we've published uh, about a year ago. Uh, and this is a little bit more of a complicated uh, tanglegram. It has more taxa for one, uh, but it also has some stuff that I'm not going to show you how to do today, but you can use the, the package that I'm going to show you how to use today uh, to do these things, uh, such as uh, placing a symbol at each one of the, the uh, taxa positions or the terminal nodes, uh, or and uh, coloring some of the association lines depending upon uh, what taxa you're looking at. So these uh, these here are ACE2 binding uh, beta coronaviruses uh, that have the association lines in red. Uh, so I wanted to show that they were uh, different than all the other uh, taxa that do not bind ACE2. And so that's why you see these red associations. So uh, another thing that we did here on this one is uh, we added a legend, and that legend is actually partially transparent so that you can see uh, the branches behind the the legend because we were uh, kind of confined in space and had to place the legend over a portion of the tree. So anyway, we're going to do a much simpler tree today or simpler tanglegram. We're going to compare two trees uh, that have four taxa apiece. And in order to do this, uh, you're going to need a couple of example trees. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up uh, Notepad on your computer if, if you have a uh, uh, PC. And in Notepad, you're going to input in NUIC format uh, two different trees. So your first one is going to be test tree one dot NWK. And you need to enter this into it and then click file and save. Now, when you click file and save, uh, you're going to do file and save as you, it's very important that you select all files on the save as type. And then you add the dot NWK to, uh, the tree name up here. In this case, we're going to call it test tree one dot NWK. Uh, if you don't do it this way, then notepad will save it as a text file and not as a dot NWK. Put the .nwk is essentially a text file anyway, but we need it in .nwk uh, for the A package uh, in R. So that way we can use the uh, .nwk file extension. So you're going to do that for that tree. You're going to input that. You, unfortunately, you won't be able to copy and paste it, but this is a very simple tree. Uh, so you can just type it out exactly the way I have it here. Now then, you're going to need a second tree. And that second tree, uh, you're going to need to type it out just like this. And you're going to name that tree test tree 2nwk Okay, so once you have those two sample trees done, now we need to get the location of those trees. So you're going to go uh, to the directory where you save those test trees, wherever it is. I would make a little example directory on your, your system. Uh, but anyway, once you get to that directory, wherever it is, you're going to right click on the address bar and you're going to click copy addresses text. And then you're going to go back to notepad and you're going to open up a new tab in notepad and you're going to paste that address. And the reason we're doing this is because uh, when you copy the address like that, it's going to have all backslashes in it. And we need forward slashes like that. So we're going to add a forward slash at the end of the directory name or the directory structure and then we're going to go to file and or actually edit 
and replace. And we're going to replace a backsplash with a forward splash. And we're going to replace all. Okay, so that gets it in the form. It's the directory location in the form that we will need in R. Okay, so you're going to copy that. And you're going to remember the name of these two trees that you got test tree one.nwk at test tree two.nwk. You're then going to go into R and let me get rid of all my past uh, output here. Okay, you're going to go into R and we're going to use the Ape and the Fight Tools libraries uh, to perform our analysis, create the tangogram. And the Ape library uh, we're essentially just going to use to input the trees and to get them in the right uh, form for five tools to to read them and so you're going to start out so let's say you're starting out from scratch and you don't have uh, the file name for tree a so you're going to paste that location of that directory that you copied a minute ago and then you're going to place the file name there so it's test tree one dot nwk and you're going to repeat that for test tree two which will be uh, assigned to tree b your tree b will be uh, test tree two okay so that brings the trees into our uh and stores them as tree a and tree b we're then going to take those trees and we're going to convert them to cladograms and so we're going to say tree a and we're going to use the compute br len uh, function for tree a and we're going to reassign it to tree a so we're just kind of uh placing these in the right form to be read by uh the five tools library okay now we're going to create an association matrix so an association matrix tells uh five tools what tip labels in tree A to associate with what trip labels, tip labels in tree B. So that's essentially like a, uh, like a spreadsheet that you would see in Excel. So we'll take a look at the association matrix just so you see what it looks like. So it's saying in, in tree one, associate ACT4 tip label with ACT4 trip, uh, tip label in, in tree two. And ACT1 to ACT1, ACT2, ACT2. ACT3 to ACT3. Now then, these do not have to be like this. You can have different labels in tree one that you don't have in tree two, but you have to tell five tools how you want them associated. So that's where the association matrix comes in. So if you want to play with that and uh, associate different names from the two trees, uh, you can do that. Okay, but for the purposes of this demonstration, uh, we're going to create an association matrix that has the same tip labels in it because our trees have identical tip labels in them. So if there's a tip label in tree A, it's also in tree B. So we're just going to use tree, tree B tip labels in both columns, uh, and, and that's going to be our association matrix. We're then going to create a tanglegram as a uh, cofilo object using the cofilo function of five tools. So we're going to use cofilo of tree A, tree B. We're going to use the association matrix to figure out how they need to be lined up across from each other. And what this is going to do is it's going to rotate the different nodes and align them in an optimal manner uh, so that the you don't have association lines running all over the place at diagonals that, that's unneeded. So at this point, let's run that block of code. We run that block of code, and we kind of look at what it did here. It, brought in the association matrix, and then it rotated the nodes to get the, uh, the optimal alignment like we talked about of the two trees. Uh, and it, it stored those as OBJ or object. So uh, now we're gonna move on to the next block of code here. And this block of code is gonna plot that object. And uh, what it's gonna do here is we're gonna have curved lines uh, that link the, the matching uh, tip labels. They're gonna be solid, but we're also gonna make them partially transparent blue. And then the font size of the tip labels is gonna be 0 0.7. So let's go ahead and run this and it'll display the tanglegram showing the uh, association lines between them. So now, you may need to do something with this tangogram other than just look at it. You may need to use it in a publication. So 
uh, we then need to export it. So right here, we're going to export it as a PDF. So we're going to set the working directory uh, to some directory on your, your system. In my case, I have it back at the same spot that we had the test tree files. Uh, and I've already done a PDF previously, but I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Okay. So now we have no, no PDF in here. We're going to go back to our, uh, we're going to set the working directory here to that directory that we just uh, deleted the PDF from. We're going to open a PDF file and get it ready to be written to. And it's going to be 11 high or in height and eight and a half wide. Uh, and then once we have it open and ready to be written to, then we're going to uh, plot the, the tangle gram again. Uh, and then we're going to shut the file. So uh, we're going to plot the, the object. We still got the curb lines. Uh, they're still solid lines and they're still transparent, still blue, uh, partially transparent. And, but we're going to change the font size a little bit. So now we're putting this, this tangle gram on a much larger format. Uh, so we want to make the font size a little bit bigger. So you're not looking at super little, uh, you know, tip labels and the, the tangle. Gram. So let's go ahead and run that. And it, it just gives you an, a warning here that tells you that the directory was changed. Uh, don't worry about that warning. Uh, you don't need to do anything with that. Uh, but let's go back to our directory, our working directory, and you see that the, uh, the, the PDF is in there now. And let's open the PDF and look at the Tangle Gram. And there you have it. There's the Tangle Gram as a PDF. Uh, and as you can see, it's identical to the Tangle Gram that was output actually in R. So uh, there's a lot of extra stuff that you can do with this. Uh, and it, I've customized the script uh, tremendously in, uh, in my research that I, I've used to, to create these pretty complicated Tangle Grams like, like this one here. Uh, and you can do all this. You can change the, the uh, symbol at the tip at the tips, you can, uh, you know, change the color of the association lines. Uh, you can add the legend, all, all this stuff can be done. Uh, there's a great blog, uh, that Liam Revel, uh, who is the author of the five tools package and it's, and it's an awesome package, but, uh, Liam Revel has this blog at blog.fitools.org. And I, I would really encourage you to go here and look through his blog, work through his examples, uh, and you'll be able to figure out how to, uh, you know, create uh, the, the Tangle Grams that are customized to the way that you want them done. Uh, it's going to take some work. It's not easy. Uh, you're going to have to search a little bit for the stuff that you need to change in there. Uh, but it, I'm confident that with, with time, you'll be able to find the, the different variables that you can change uh, in order to, to, you know, make the, the tangle grams look the way that you want them. So uh, I, I hope this helps you out. I hope it gets you a little further down the line with your research. Uh, and I hope you're producing great tangle grams. This is really the, the best package out there that I've found anyway uh, to produce publication quality tangle grams uh, in uh, honestly, nothing, nothing that I've seen thus far even comes close to uh, being able to produce tangle grams that look like this. So I hope it helps you out. Uh, if you liked the video, please uh, like it on YouTube and also uh, please subscribe to my channel.